Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, we certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy, his love and his kindness that he has shown toward each of us. We thank God for how he has woke us up this morning and started us on our way. I want to welcome you to another Bible study here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, where I am the lead pastor, Bishop Frankie L. Quinn, Sr., and uh, we certainly do thank God for my lovely wife, Tracy Quinn, and the leadership team here at Christian Ministries. Um, this is a good day, a good day to serve the Lord, a good day to turn one's heart unto the Lord, a good day to submit to the Lord. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we certainly do want to remember all the bereaved families, uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Uh, it's truly um, some bereaved families that are out there that are going through and uh, not only through the pandemic, but uh, people are, are suffering with natural deaths and their families. So let us pray one for another and let us, um, the Bible says, weep with them, uh, mourn with them that mourn, and laugh with them that laugh or rejoice. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly want to remember them in a special way. And also, too, we want to remember um, those that are fighting for righteousness and fighting for holiness and those that are going through in all areas of life. Uh, truly, if there's ever a time to pray and to seek after God, uh, these are the times. This is the time to seek after God and to call upon Him. Uh, we preached on Sunday uh, a message that dealt with seeking God and ask and ye shall receive. Seek ye shall find and knock and the door shall be open. And truly God wants us to seek him. God wants us to call upon his name. God wants us to trust in him uh, like never before. I found out early in my ministry that uh, the Lord uh, wants us to trust in him and to not to trust in him is an insult to him. The Lord really doesn't look favorably on people that don't trust in Him. But those that put their confidence in Him, those that trust in Him, they find God's favor. They find God's help. Why? Because they are trusting in the Lord. And that's what the scripture says. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but to acknowledge Him in all thy ways and He shall direct thy path. I found out that you can be pondering uh, some things that you need. You can be pondering a question that you may have. You can be, uh, Lord, I don't know how we're going to do this, but I trust you. And watch and see, the Lord makes a way. The Lord gives you an answer. The Lord opens a door because you're trusting in him. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, let us remember as once again, uh, men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, we just say thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you've blessed us and watched over us and kept us even to this very hour. We ask you, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to strengthen us with all might, lead us and guide us into all truth. Help us, Lord, to be able to stand in the midst of whatever we're experiencing, whatever we're going through. We ask you, Lord, that you bless every bereaved family, those that have lost loved ones, those that have lost their friends. We ask you, Lord, that you bless them in the name of Jesus. Comfort their hearts. The scripture says, Blessed are he that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Comforted with your spirit, Lord. Comforted with your anointing, your love, and your mercy, and your grace. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on today. We ask you, Lord, that you uh, touch the hearts of men and women and children, that we may receive of your word with meekness, uh, that we may grow thereby. And, Father, we thank you and we praise you, give you glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today's uh, lesson uh, for our Bible study is August uh, 26, 2020. I want to come out of the book of Michael. Micah. I'm sorry, Michael. Micah. Come out of the book of Micah. Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. And um, Micah chapter number six. Micah chapter number six. And uh, the, the name Micah, it means who is like Jehovah. And he's asking a question. His name is actually a question. Who is like Jehovah? Isn't that an interesting question uh, to ask? Who is like Jehovah? And I'm sure you could come up and say, there's none like Jehovah. There's none like our God. And you would be 300% right. There's none like him in all the earth. Who can compare unto our Lord? And uh, the interesting thing about that is, is that uh, whether people know it or not, everyone has going to have to answer to him in the end. Uh, people from all over uh, will have to answer to God who is sovereign for their worship, for their giving, for the way that they lead their lives. Um, none can escape, none can escape the judgment of God. And none can escape the eye of the Lord. The Lord, the Bible says that the, the eye of the Lord goes to and fro. It's looking for those that are truly uh, seeking after him to do his will. That's why he's really looking. But uh, while he's looking, he's also finding those that are not doing his will. And he's keeping note or keeping track of them. So, uh, beloved, we have to realize that uh, the rebellious and the sinful will meet uh, their judgment in the end. But the righteous, the, what the Bible says, the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, it shall perish. But the way of the righteous, they should, who, those who trust in God and put their hope in Him, uh, following after His word, shall see Him in glory. I can hear our Lord and Savior now saying, Well done thy good and faithful servant, enter ye into the joy of the Lord. And that's the reason why Paul himself said, I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And notice what he said, not only to me, but to also everyone else that loves his appearing. So I want you to be encouraged today, beloved, and uh, really uh, examine yourself. The Bible says, let a man examine themselves to see whether or not they're walking in the faith, the faith, the faith that Jehovah has, has, has established or our God through Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus said, these very profound words. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, and it's a blessing, it's a blessing to be in this way, in the way of holiness, in the way of righteousness. So as we begin to look at our Bible study on today, coming out of the book of Micah, uh, especially our foundational scripture will be from chapter number six and verse number eight. Our subject is what the Lord requires of thee. What the Lord requires of thee. And it's important for us to have some context or some background information as to uh, this great prophet's writing. Uh, history says that uh, it's possible that his family was not prominent, but uh, Micah made some very prominent prophecies. Uh, he prophesied uh, that the children of Israel would be taken into uh, captivity. 
he also prophesied hope, uh, saying that there would become a deliverer, Micah chapter number 5, that they will become a deliverer uh, that uh, from Bethlehem of Judea, uh, God would raise up the Son of God. He would come out. Uh, that's where he would be born. In other words, he prophesied about the birth of Jesus Christ. Very prominent very prominent scripture, uh, wouldn't you say? <laughs> uh, so as we begin to look at the era in which uh, Micah prophesied, uh, the people at this point in time, they had been affluent for a, a very long time. They were living uh, in a luxurious lifestyle with riches and uh, to a point wherein uh, they were turning towards corruption. They were turning towards uh, the way of evil as opposed to the way of the Lord. The Bible says explicitly that the love of money is the root of all evil. And anytime uh, people become rich or people become uh, powerful, uh, they have to really check themselves to make sure that their position, their fame, and their financial influences don't corrupt them. Uh, evil communication, the Bible says, corrupt good manners. So we have to be careful. The people in his day, they grew content uh, with, with going through the religious motions and uh, practicing very little spiritual devotion. And uh, anytime an individual uh, grows up to know God, um, as Jesus said in his parable about the seed and the sower, that it's possible for an individual, the word of God in an individual life, to be choked uh, by the cares of this world or the cares of this life. And that's what was happening to them. Um, as they became prominent in their affluence or their riches, um, they were moving away from the spirituality of God. And anytime you move away from uh, the spirituality of God, not worshiping him in spirit and in truth, uh, just going through the motions, uh, it's a bad thing. Even in a marriage, when a couple just go through the motions and not really spend time with one another and love upon one another, um, their marriage um, is headed toward a bad direction. So, so anytime uh, anybody is in relationship with God, uh, you have to seek Him daily. You have to call upon His name. You have to read and practice his word in order to maintain a connection. That's what the scripture means when it tells us that we have to be born again of the water and of the spirit. We start a new spiritual life. And that new spiritual life, uh, the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new being. Uh, all old things, that old lifestyle has been put away. And behold, all things have become new. God expects us to walk in his new and living way. Uh, my God, God expects us uh, to have a relationship with him on a daily basis like no other. Uh, in the Hebrews, uh, especially in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, they have what's called the, the Shema prayer. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And, uh, and he says uh, that thou shalt uh, teach these to thy children. And, and the Lord wants us to love him wholeheartedly and teach his children his way. So uh, God is really seeking after a relationship. 
God is seeking after true worship, those that will worship him in spirit and in truth on a continual basis. Uh, and that means that you have to really sacrifice uh, the world. Uh, you can't love God and love man. You can't love God and love money. Uh, either you'll love the one or you'll hate the other. So uh, that's what Israel and Judah begin to do. They begin to turn their hearts from God. And as they were turning their hearts from God, God sent the prophet to give a warning. And even in today's society, even in today's world, if you, uh, I know that uh, some of you that are listening to me today have uh, some spiritual background and uh, a knowledge of today's society and history. That uh, the history and the world are not necessarily as a whole growing closer to God. Um, uh, the history and the, of this life and the world are, are drawing away from God. And when an individual draws away from God, uh, even the country, even the nation, even the world, they're headed toward destruction. The Lord wants us to draw nigh to him. The Lord wants us to draw closer to him. And if anybody draws closer to the Lord, you find peace, you find joy, you find happiness. That's why the scripture says, I'm going to move on from my introduction, but that's why the scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. If you want to be blessed, and, and, and God is not against prosperity, God is not against riches. Uh, in fact, a cattle on a thousand hills belongs unto God. But what God is against is uh, an individual who puts those things above him, that trust in uncertain riches more than trusting in the true and living God. So um, also, the leaders were, uh, in this sense, uh, corrupt in the fact that they spoke messages uh, that were uh, pleasing to the people in their situation. Uh, the scripture tells, talks, warns us about heaping to yourself teachers having itching ears. In other words, it's, it's a dangerous place to go from one preacher or one pastor to another preacher to another pastor until you hear a message that you agree with. <laughs> My God. And, and it's a dangerous pastor that doesn't teach the way of God, but just teaches words that please the people. Jesus, he taught this in uh, the Sermon of the Mount. He said that those that uh, uh, are blessed in the kingdom or great in the kingdom are those that... Uh, uh, not only uh, preach the word, but also practice it themselves. And he said those that are least in the kingdom are those that uh, uh, speak the word and don't practice the word. You've got to be able to speak God's word and practice the word, not deceiving the people. Uh, I'm talking to my leaders out there now. You don't want to deceive the people. All right, and um, so as the people became prosperous, they turned from the Lord. And in this scripture here, uh, in Matthew chapter, I mean, um, Micah chapter number six, uh, God is, through the prophet, is laying out his uh, indictment on the people um, to get them to turn, to get them to see the error of their ways. I thank God that uh, he comes to us in such a way, in such times, 
uh, especially times like these, to, to give us a wake up, to give us a warning, to get our hearts to turn back to God. Even uh, what we are experiencing now, this uh, uh, COVID-19, this pandemic, these racial wars and these financial distresses and, and so on and so forth. These are the times where we should wake up and turn our heart back to the Lord. We should turn our hearts to God so that God can help us, so that God can deliver us, so that God can uh, uh, give us what we need. Because I truly believe with all my heart we're living in the end times and Jesus is soon to come. I don't know the hour, I don't know the day, I don't know when he's coming, but uh, surely the Bible is teaching us that, that perilous times have come and uh, people are turning their hearts away from God. So we have to, uh, God is using this time to, to shake us up, to, to wake us up so that we can turn our hearts unto the Lord so that we can be saved. So in the book of, uh, of Micah, chapter number six, God is uh, talking about our character. Uh, verse number eight. And our subject this evening is uh, what the Lord requires of thee. What the Lord requires of thee. And we're coming out of Micah chapter 6 and verse number 8, and it says, He hath shown thee, O man, what is good, uh, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and love mercy, and walk humbly before thy God. And what I found out in this particular scripture that was interesting to me is that this is in a form of a question. He's asking a question. And anytime that uh, anybody is going to turn their heart, anytime an individual is going to examine their ways, it must begin with a question. Uh, Isaiah said, Who hath believed our report? To whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? He was asking a question so that he could turn your heart and so that you can see Jesus, what Jesus has done for you. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. And the chastisement of uh, our peace was laid upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. It began with a question. God is, is, is asking this question so that we can examine our motives so that we can examine our character. God, my God, my God, God is concerned about your character. God is concerned about your motives. Jesus said this. He said, you are the, uh, the salt of the earth. Uh, if the salt has lost its savior, when forth shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast under the feet of men. As, as the disciple of Jesus Christ, as Jesus' disciple, you are the influence and uh, you are the preserver of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you have lost your purpose, if you have lost the the, your, your, your influence to, to influence others. If you have lost your way and don't retain the gospel of Jesus Christ to promote it, then he says you're good for nothing. Uh, you have, you, you're good just to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. And notice what he also said. You are the light of the world. Meaning that that, that you are the guidance. You, when he saved you, you were supposed to guide others uh, to him. And in guiding, 
uh, you are to reflect his glory, reflect his power, reflect his anointing. I could go on and on. But, but, but uh, you are to help others to receive life. And uh, when an individual has fallen short of that, then they are no prophet unto the Lord. Because notice what he says. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill. Uh, and he said, no man taketh uh, 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 his light and put it under a bushel, but he put it under uh, on a candlestick so it may give light to all that are in the house. You don't want to put your light behind a bushel. You want to put it on a candlestick so they can give light to all that are in the house. Now, what was going on here in the scriptures was uh, Israel was losing their way and God wanted them to return unto him. We don't want to ever lose our way. God wants us to return unto him and to remain in him, to abide in him, to prosper in him. There's nothing outside of your life that you should experience without God. <laughs> By God. Hallelujah. Every aspect of your life is to be experienced with God. And, and um, anytime an individual wants to hide, uh, then they're not doing right. Anytime an individual wants to shut away from God, they're not doing what's right in the sight of God. That's what um, uh, Adam and Eve did. When they sinned against God, they hid themselves. And uh, God knew where they were. God knows where we are. Anytime that we hide ourselves, that's a strong indication that we're not doing right. Anytime that we don't uh, are, are, are not walking up rightly and, and uh, doing those things which are secretive, then we're not doing what God's will and what he requires. So therefore, uh, that's what God was after here in these scriptures. He said, uh, notice what he says, he hath shown thee, O man, what is good? God had shown them and has taught them what is good. God has shown us and he has taught us what is good. In fact, God puts his laws into your heart. God puts his will and his desire in your heart. Um, that's what Paul meant when he said, when I desire to do good, Evil is with me, <laughs> my God. You don't have to tell and teach people that it's wrong to lie. You don't have to teach people that it's wrong to steal. You don't have to teach people that it is wrong to commit fornication or adultery. If it, if, uh, if it wasn't uh, evil or people knew that it was uh, wasn't right, they wouldn't be hiding it. They wouldn't be making excuses for it. <laughs> My God. So, so God is saying that I have shown thee what is good. God has shown us what is good. God is after our moral character. And notice what he says. He says, God has shown thee what is good. And I just want to go back just for a moment, that uh, in the book of Psalms, Psalms 14 and verse number 2, it says, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if they were any that did understand and seek him. Now let me read that again. Psalms 14 and verse number 2. It says, the Lord looked down from heaven. The Lord is looking. Uh, he's seeking uh, from heaven. 
He's looking and seeking for those that really want to know him. Uh, the scripture says, as the deer panted after the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Uh, my friend, it's, 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 it's wisdom to seek after God. And then when seeking after God, God is able to purify your heart. God is able to pour into you his mind, his spirit, his attributes, and redefine your way. Uh, because the scripture says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of that way is death. But when an individual seeks after God and begins to cry out to God and, and call on him, it's, a, it, it's an automatic connection because it's not God's will that any, anybody should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that no man cometh unto the Father but by him. So, so, so notice that Psalms 14 and 2. It says, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if they were any that did understand and seek him. So God is looking for those that understand him uh, and seek after him. He says in one uh, book, it talks about man seeking after wisdom and seeking after knowledge and seeking after understanding. And, and God is saying that no man really seeketh after me. Uh, everybody that does not seek after God, they go after their own way. And when they go after their own way, they lead, it leads to a pathway of destruction. But those that seek after God and God's way to understand him and to implement his way, they find life uh, and that more abundant. Uh, there's a, another uh, passage of scripture in the book of uh, Psalms, Psalms uh, 14 uh, and verse number five and part B of that particular verse. And it says, God is in the generation of the righteous. God is in the generation of the righteous. Those that seek after righteousness, and righteousness is simply doing that which God calls right, following after the, the will of God. God is in them. God, God is with them. <laughs> God, God promotes those that promote his way. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God, my God. So, so if you want God to be on your side, you have to be on the side of God. If you want God to be on your enemy, be, be your enemy, then you uh, just simply... Don't subscribe to the will of God. For the Bible says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Uh, God is resisting those that, that don't submit to him. But God is giving grace and strength to those that do submit to him. That's why the scripture says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, um, we could go on, but the scripture is telling you that those that have moral character, those that want to seek and understand and know their God, will be blessed. Uh, my God. Uh, when you ask and seek and knock, the Bible, those are all positives. Thank you, Lord. The Lord will be with thee. The Lord will give thee what you need 
in the time of need. God will protect you. God will watch over you day and night, night and day. Because why? You're, you're, you're cognizant of him. You're seeking after him. You, you surrender your life to him. And that's what God wants. And he's after those that uh, have moral character and moral standard. Notice what the scripture says. He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee. God has some requirements of you. <laughs> My God. God. God is just and God is fair. But God is no fool. Amen. And we just can't do anything and live any kind of way and yet claim God as our God. Jesus said uh, 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 those in, in, in his, 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 his parable, those that Claim to be, call him Lord. And he says, why callest thou me Lord and doeth not my requirements? Why call me Lord and don't do what I say? <laughs> don't do what I teach. Uh, that's, 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 that's just like a stubborn person. Uh, think about it. If you uh, hired an individual, you were an employer and you hired an individual, and you gave them their job descriptions, and they totally ignored their job description. Uh, what would you do to that individual? Would you keep them or would you fire them? <laughs> uh, uh, that's just common sense. And the Lord, he wants us to have common sense. A lot of people think that uh, they can do anything and say anything and be accepted of the Lord. But the Lord has some requirements. Uh, the Lord has a will and a way. That his will must match his way. In other words, you find the, when you exact the will of God, you walk in his way. When you exact the will of God, you walk in his way. So notice the scripture. Ah, oh, my God. He says, uh, and what doth the Lord require of thee? Now notice, God requires something of you. And uh, God's interest is not in the offering, but in the offerers. You see, they were uh, trying to offer up God uh, their money, their, their, their sacrifices, without really uh, having a heart for God. They were really just going through the motions, but never really in touch or in tune with God. It's like you could pray and just do a route prayer, saying a bunch of words, but never really connecting or meaning your words unto the Lord. The scripture says, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, which means that your prayer is heartfelt. Your prayer is genuine. And God, he would accept that over just simple words of a prayer that somebody has learned. And this is what they were doing with their sacrifices. They knew what God required in their sacrifices. But instead of uh, being sincere with their sacrifices, they were just going through the motions. That's like people who show up on Sunday, Sunday morning, uh, it's term, service time, time to go to church. So uh, they just go to church. And they get into church. They stand up for prayer. They sit down. They go through the scripture reading. They give their offering. Uh, they hear the word. And then they leave. And then they say, I was at church. But never 
touching <laughs> the hem of his garment. Never getting into the service and the praise and the worship and giving thanks unto the God for an honest and a sincere heart. God said a broken spirit and a contrite heart he will in no wise despise. And that's what the Lord requires of us. Be honest, be sincere, be fervent, be effectual. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seek after God with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding, but acknowledge your God in all of your ways so that he can direct your path. The worst thing you can do in serving after your God is going through the motions. Hey, Shabbat. God does not want you to go through the motions. Hallelujah. God wants you to be real. Real or nothing. All or nothing. Hallelujah. Withholding nothing. That's why he said present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, give God your all. Be all in. Hallelujah. My God. Don't, don't shirk your responsibility. If, you, if you're going to go with God one mile, go with him two miles. Hallelujah. Go all the way. Thank you, Lord. And when we don't serve God with passion, when we don't serve God with, with love and with mercy and with justice, then we're doing uh, God a disservice and you're doing yourself a disservice. Because in the end, uh, you'll be disappointed when you turn to the Lord and he said, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Depart from me. <laughs> My God, those are words that are too hard to bear. My God. So it's better uh, not to try to fool and to try to trick God because all things are open. All things are naked before him, uh, before him whom we have to do. Uh, in other words, everything that we say, God knows. God knows our thoughts even before our thoughts come to us. So we can't fool God. We can't trick God. <laughs> My God. So you might as well be real. My God. Be real with God. So we see here then, notice what he says. Uh, he says, uh, but the scripture says, he has shown thee uh, what is good. God has shown you what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee. Now, notice, he's, he's giving you these requirements. He says, God, God uh, uh, has, has, has requires something. People know God. Uh, people that know God Know the things that he requires. Now notice, God's interest is, like I said, is not in the offering, but it's in the offerer. Uh, you can bring God gold, you can bring God silver, but God is looking on you. He's judging your heart, and he's looking at your heart. Uh, that Jesus told of a parable that a, 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 a leader came to the synagogue to pray along with this poor man. And the one stood before God and said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like this sinner. <laughs> and, and the sinner said, Lord, forgive me because I'm a sinner. And then Jesus said, which one went justified, went home justified? And the answer is the one that, that, that declared, Lord, I'm in need. I, I'm a sinner. I need your grace. I need your help. <laughs> My God, we need the help of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, the reason why I've lived this life, not because I'm better than you. Uh, I live this life because I'm worse off. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that I'm a sinner that needs grace to be saved by grace that needs his mercy, that needs God's love. Thank you, Lord. My God, I need God. Shabbat Hallelujah. I need the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And many times you recognize and understand 
that you, you need him. Why do I need him? Because my thoughts are corrupt. My ways are wicked. Oh, hallelujah. That, 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 I'm, that I'm adverse to myself. Thank you, Jesus. Anytime you realize that, that Lord, uh, uh, with thee I can do all things, but without thee I can do nothing. God, God can help you. God can deliver you. God can strengthen you. When you understand and recognize that you have a need, God, God, and you surrender yourself and your need to God and say, God, I, I won't let you go until you bless my soul. And, and though you slay me, yet will I trust you. God will bless you. God will help you. My God, God will deliver you if you surrender your life unto the Lord and walk in his way. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah, my God. So notice, he said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of that way is death. Now notice, God has shown us what was required. He told us that he wants us to do justly. And that word to do justly means uh, God wants us to act uh, with good reason and sound judgment in our minds according to the will of God. God wants us to walk in his will and in his way with sound reason and sound judgment. Now, what I mean by that is, is you can know what to do is right. Uh, uh, David uh, and, and Jesus' disciples, they were accused. David was, a, uh, well, let me bring it back. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Jesus' disciples uh, were accused by the Pharisees of eating with unwashed hands. Uh, and and uh, Jesus said to them, uh, uh, those that accused, have you not heard what David did uh, when he was a hunger? He ate of the showbread on the Sabbath day. So, so what Jesus was saying was simply this, is that you've got to know and understand how to apply righteous standards at righteous times. Uh, there's a time uh, to stand firm and, and solid on the word of God. And now, what I mean by that is this, is that there's never a time for sinning. There's never a time to allow for sin. But there are times uh, to allow for mercy and common sense. And that's what Jesus was teaching. He said that those people, uh, he said, uh, he told them, understand or learneth what this meaneth. Meaning this, that, that uh, when you're walking with God and understanding God and beginning to live for God, you gain greater wisdom, greater knowledge, greater understanding on how to apply the scriptures when they need to be applied. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God, my God. Understand what I'm saying. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding. My God, you can be staunched and, 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 and firm, uh, but you also got to show mercy. You also got to show love. Hallelujah. You also got to reach down and help people, uh, especially in their time of need. That's what God does for us. God shows us mercy. God shows us loving kindness. God is just. He's fair. Hallelujah. And he applies his holy standard to every uh, situation of our lives. God considers our ways, and he helps us in our time of need. Thank you, Lord. So notice what he said. Uh, uh, to do justly means to act with good reason and soundness of mind according to God's holy standard. Um, in other words, uh, uh, put line on line and precept on precept. 
You've got to seek after God to know when to apply his word to every situation and every condition. It's, I just want to bring my point out just a little bit further, then I'll move on. Um, um, some of my children, I can, I can, I can yell at or, or get stern with, and they'll, they'll, they'll straighten up and do what I said. Other ones, I got to talk nice to. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta take another approach uh, to get them to obey, to do what I said. And, and having that understanding. And having the ability to apply wisdom and knowledge uh, and, do, and be just and be fair is, is the way to go. It's like, my God, Lord is helping me. It's like the prodigal son. The prodigal son uh, returned home after spinning up his father's goods. And, 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 and the father received him back and loved him. God put a ring on his finger, gave him the fatted calf, a party was going on in the house, but then the son that never left, he felt bad and said, Dad, why are you treating him like that? You never gave me a party. I was here with you all the time. And he was literally accusing the father of being unjust, of being unfair. But because the father had sound wisdom and judgment, he told the, the, the other son, hey, you've been with me always. Um, uh, uh, everything I have, it belongs to you. You should rejoice that your brother has returned home. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's the justness and fairness uh, of God. When you begin to walk with God, God begins to Open up your understanding so that you can meet out his justice, meet out his fairness in every situation. Not according to man, but according to the will of God. Hallelujah. By God. So let me move on. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let me move on. So we see here, um, God wants you to love mercy. In other words, he wants you to this is your moral character, your, your way of walking with him. He wants you to show unconditional kindness to all in, in, in all times of need. Uh, when you love mercy, the Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And, and it's because of God's grace uh, that he's able to show mercy. It's because God grace that is upon your life that you're able to show mercy and and God wants you to show mercy why because that's his attribute he shows mercy he wants you to be like him so when people do you wrong uh, mistreat you and 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 you got an opportunity to to turn them in uh, that's the time to show mercy not now, and, and you do that looking down the road as, as, as this individual is a soul that can be saved, that can be delivered. And people remember acts of kindness that you've shown unto them, which in turn you can turn them to Jesus. You can bring them from darkness to light, from the power of serving Satan unto the power of serving God. Hallelujah, my God. That's what light is for, my Lord. That's what guidance is for. That's what love is for. That's what the fruit of the Spirit is for. So that you can show off the attributes of God in your everyday life. Notice what he said. My God, hallelujah. Love mercy. And then he says, walk humbly with your God. In other words, conform to the will of God and to the way of God. God wants you to walk humbly with him. God wants you to confirm, conform to his will and to his way. So beloved, um, our Bible study on today, it says that God has shown us what is required of us. To, 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 to love, to do justly, to love mercy, 
and to walk humbly with our God. Be encouraged on today. Transform your life into a life that meets up with the standard of God. Don't trust in uncertain riches. Don't look to the left nor to the right, but keep your eye on the Lord. Walk in his way. Don't be like the children of Israel that they gave up on their God and they turned from their Lord and they met the end of destruction. God loves us and we love him. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. We often look at that scripture as, I don't want to say bad, but as condemning. But you've got to look at it in this way, that whatever I sow, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, knowing that your work or your labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. Whatever you give to God, my God, 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 God will give it back to you. Good. He packed down, shaking together, and running over. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Uh, be sure to give through tithely PayPal on our website. You can mail in your offerings, or you can bring them to our Sunday morning service, or you can drop them off. We thank God for you, and heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.